Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast. I am Chip Brown of Horns 24-7, joined as always by our fearless leader, the managing editor of Horns 24-7, the one and only Taylor Estes. Taylor, uh, we are talking post-game following a, a 32-27 victory by Texas at TCU. Now, if I'd have told you going into this game that Texas was going to win 32 to 27. Oh, wait, I almost did. I predicted 31, 27, but, um, if I'd have told you that was going to be the final score and Texas nation, Longhorn nation, they would have been ecstatic with that. Right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll be honest, I was the, I even said in my prediction at Horns 24-7, when we do our staff predictions every every week, you know, I said, I never predict this game right. So I was like, I'm just going to help out our Horns 24-7 members and predict TCU to win because it's like, I went back, Chip, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating this. I went back and since we have been working at 24-7, every time I paid Texas to win this game, they've lost. The one time I picked TCU to win was in 2018, which was the one time Texas won the game. So I was like, hey, I'm clearly the kiss of death, right? So I'm just going to, you know, for our members' uh, sanity, for our own sanity, I picked TCU. But yeah, I think that, you know, Texas fans should be ecstatic about this because they have not, you know, been able to come out on the winning side of this Texas TCU, you know, matchup since TCU joined the Big 12. So yeah, I agree 100%. Like they should be very happy about this right now. Okay, so then I throw in um, the fact that, well, do we want to get to the good news first or the bad news first? Um, Let's start with the good news because I feel like it's a win. So we'll start off with the good, right? And sure. Texas fans want to hear the good right now, I think. So yeah, Fair let's enough. start with the good. Fair enough. Bijan Robinson went to the Metroplex and basically did an, an impression of Emmett Smith, who was the best I've ever seen at sidestepping tacklers and making them miss from point blank range. And Bijan Robinson did it all game long against a really fired up, inspired TCU defense coming off an embarrassing performance last week, giving up 350 yards rushing. Uh, in a 42-34 loss to SMU. And Bijan Robinson finishes this game with a career high 216 yards on 35 carries and two touchdowns, none bigger than the third and six carry for six yards, thanks to a clearing block from tight end Cade Brewer with 253 left in the game that allowed Texas to basically run out the clock. It was the ceiling play of, of the game and how fitting that it would be Bijan Robinson carrying the ball in traffic, making it happen and sealing the victory with a career high 216 yards rushing. The first time a Texas back has run for 200 yards in a game since Deontay Foreman did it in 2016. And Taylor, every time they needed uh, a play, it seemed like, you know, Bijan Robinson was either getting called to deliver or, or did deliver. And um, he came through in a massive way, had a 27 yard touchdown run. Um, and, even caught two passes for 22 yards. And this was a coming of age game for Bijan Robinson. He had to put a struggling team on his back and carry them to victory because we'll get to the laundry list of mistakes, struggles, things Texas had to overcome in this game. It was about as bad as we've seen a Texas team play this year, even worse than Arkansas, believe it or not. And they overcame it one on the road against a nemesis who'd beaten them seven of the last nine years. And, oh, by the way, they have a laundry list of things to work on getting ready to play their most heated rival 
uh, Oklahoma this week. We'll get to that. But Bijan Robinson, Taylor, unbelievable. Unbelievable. A hundred percent, Chip. I mean, <clears throat> it's funny that you look at the, what he was able to do in this game. I mean, and it, it is kind of a little bit reminiscent of the, um, Deontay Foreman back in 2016. Remember that Texas offense? That Texas offense in 2016 was Deontay Foreman. I still to this day believe that if Texas was even a competent team, Deontay Foreman would have been in New York City for the Heisman Trophy race that year because he he literally had better numbers than Derek Derek Henry, who won it I think in 2015, and um, he had to pl play 15 games to get to the numbers that he did have. Where Deontay Foreman, if he was on a you know a winning team, even a bowl eligible team, <clears throat> I do believe that he probably would have at least gotten an invite to New York. And I think that we did see that. I think that there was a lot of similarities today with Bijan Robinson and no knock on Deontay Foreman, but Bijan Robinson is worlds better than <laughs> like Deontay Foreman. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to keep it real here, Chip. This is the best running back I have ever covered in my career. And not just talking about covering, you know, running backs in my career at Texas. I'm talking about covering running backs in college football. And in 10 years, this is the best performance of a running back I've ever seen. I told my husband after the game, I was like, hey, at least I know I have about one and a half years left of covering Bijan Robinson because that's that's the reality. I mean, this kid, his ceiling is so high. He's exactly as advertised. And I, I loved, I saw um, Eddie Rizajovic say something. He covers OU, okay? And he's a diehard OU fan. He's the one that kept, you know, doing that thing for horns up for peace. The minute that Sam Ellinger said that he took, you know, people saying horns down as disrespect. So this is an OU, you know, um, I wouldn't say fan, but definitely supporter. And he said that Tom Herman should probably be in jail for the fact that Bijan Robinson did not get the amount of carries that he should have gotten last year. And I fully agree with that. I think that Bijan Robinson is not only a special player off the field, which he really is. He's a very genuine, very, you know, you saw him after the game, making sure to go to all the Texas fans that did go on the road at TCU, making sure to high five them, was hugging, you know, fans that came down like towards the state or, you know, the front line of the stadium to make sure to acknowledge them. But he is without a doubt one of the best running backs I've ever covered. And if an OU supporter can say that Tom Herman should be in jail for the fact that Bijan Robinson did not get carries last year, I think that's pretty telling of what he is. And I think that, you know, we are, if you're a Texas fan right now, if you cover Texas, if you watch college football, you're watching a truly special type of player, a once in a generation type of player, in my opinion, in Bijan Robinson. And you're right. He, you know, it's not a quarterback putting the the game on his you know back essentially to win the game. And Texas fans saw that with Sam Ellinger. This is a guy who doesn't touch the ball every single play like a quarterback does. Yet he still is the reason why Texas won this game. I mean, I I've always really been a huge fan of Bijan Robinson. I always will be a huge fan of Bijan Robinson because he is such a great kid off the field too. And talking to him, just a genuine guy. But this was this was a defining moment, I think, in his career, in my opinion. Yeah, he's remember, this is a kid who never carried it 20 times in high school. Exactly. Yeah. He talked and, about that at Big 12 Media Days. Right. And today, listen, TCU's defense is no joke. I know they had a bad day against SMU last week, but that defense was on fire today and they made a lot of plays. And and Bijan Robinson mostly on outside zone runs that's where he had the most success we'll get to this this drive where my only nitpick with steve sarkeesian really uh was on the the third and goal and fourth and goal uh running plays when he went for it in the fourth quarter and didn't run Bijan robinson on an outside zone play which Bijan had run for 17 yards, 14 yards, and 17 yards to start the drive. He had his most success on outside zone running plays. And I just figured we were going to see two of those plays in a row. Instead, we saw Roshan Johnson try to go 
up the middle, and then they brought in Devin Richardson, a linebacker, to be his to be Bijan Robinson's fullback on fourth and goal from the one. And I'm sorry, we're bringing in Devin Richardson to be a lead blocker for the first time all season. I it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But what do I know? Um, and Steve Sarkeesian certainly did not think that his defense would give up a 99 yard touchdown drive right after that. Uh, Sarkeesian said after the game that he wanted to send a message to his team that he believed in them, that he believed not only in the offense, that they could get the yard and score the touchdown, put the game out of reach because they were up 12 at that point. A touchdown would have you know, made it a three possession game, but that he also believed in his defense that they wouldn't allow a 99 yard touchdown drive after that. Well, put that on the list of things that Texas had to overcome uh, because the defense did give up a 99 yard touchdown drive right after that. In fact, TCU didn't even really get to third down on that drive. They just kept making enough plays on first and second down to keep the chains moving. Um, and, and so it, it was on the offense, the Texas offense, once again, and Bijan Robinson on that third and six with two fifty three left to convert that because TCU had burned its timeouts, didn't have any way to stop the clock and Texas wins the game. But Taylor, I want to give some love to Casey Thompson because he had a terrible, you know, first two and a half quarters. It was, he was one of five on third down passing. Xavier Worthy dropped three three passes, including a pass on the TCU eight yard line that probably would have gone for a touchdown. Worthy dropped another 20 plus yard pass that would have given Texas a first down in TCU territory in the second half. Um, he got sacked twice on third down, including a play in which left tackle Christian Jones completely whiffed uh, on his man um, and and gave up a sack in the red zone. And in case he, you know, threw an interception right before the end of the first half in which the officials missed uh, Xavier Worthy having his jersey pulled and slowing him down. Um, he had his back pad pulled too, like <laughs> watching it. It wasn't just a jersey. I mean, that was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> go to Taylor's Twitter. Go to Taylor's Twitter because she tweeted out, uh, you know, a clip of the play and, and Xavier Worthy would have been where the ball you know, came down, but he gets held and TCU picks it off. So that's enough right there for a quarterback to get rattled and, and come undone. We saw Sam Ellinger lose a 10 point lead at TCU two years ago, but Casey Thompson comes back in the third quarter, converts two third downs with his legs to extend a 12 play 75 yard touchdown drive capped by his 32 yard touchdown pass to Jordan Whittington that puts Texas up 12 in the fourth quarter. And those proved to be the game winning points. And so I, I get all the naysayers out there saying Casey Thompson, uh, that that's the real Casey Thompson. You know, th he came back down to earth. Yeah. He came back down to earth, but guess what? He finished right. He finished the game. He, he got better when his team needed it most. On that 12 play 75 yard touchdown drive, capped by his 32 yard touchdown pass to Jordan Whittington, that put Texas up 12 and proved to be the game winning points. You have to look at this game in little windows. I mean, Casey Thompson came up big when he needed it most. And Taylor, I'm I'm gonna go out and make a bold prediction right now with Texas playing Oklahoma next week. Casey Thompson grew up in Oklahoma. His dad, Charles Thompson, was the quarterback at Oklahoma under Barry Switzer when they were a top-ranked team in the 80s. Casey Thompson's going to lead Texas to victory over Oklahoma, and he's going to have a, a great week of preparation. I think this team and we will get to the, all the miscues that Texas had. For them to go clean up, it's kind of a perfect situation for Steve Sarkeesian. He gets a win against a nemesis, playing about as badly as his team can play. And his quarterback uh, came up big, just like Bijan Robinson when it mattered most. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think that you look at this game, you look at the stat line chip. Okay, so Casey Thompson, 12 of 22 with one interception, 142 yards, one passing touchdown, two sacks. His longest... Um, 
pass was 37 yards. And that's not a good stat line for any quarterback. It's not. But the fact that Texas won this game goes to show that this is a different Texas team than what you've seen in the past, in my opinion, because um, I saw a lot of people saying, you know, this Texas team before would have lost, or, you know, Texas teams in the past would have lost this game. I'm not saying that they would have lost that game. I would say that the Texas teams of the past would have lost by 30 points in this game. I mean, seriously, like it wasn't, it literally was not a pretty win. I, I like that Steve Sarkeesian was willing to openly say that. I mean, in post game, he said, I would rather win ugly than lose pretty. And that's exactly what this was. It wasn't a glowing performance for anyone on the offense except for Bijan Robinson, which is good. As, I mean, sadly, like I, I'm not trying to say it as quote unquote good, but it is good that Texas has a player that is like that. Again, I think a generational type of player is what we're seeing in Bijan Robinson right now. But, you know, the fact that this Texas team actually came out on top of TCU, especially with the history of this rivalry. I won't. I, I don't like to say rivalry because I don't necessarily think it is a rivalry. I think TCU series. considers it. Yes, this yeah, series. series. Yeah. Recent history of this series. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And that it doesn't usually work out in Texas's favor. It did this game, and that was because of Bijan Robinson. And again, that's not the quarterback. Like in this type of a win in years past, we'll go back to the last four years. If this type of win came out. It was because the quarterback, Sam Ellinger, is the reason why the game was won, in my opinion, because, you know, he touched the ball every single time. And that's not the case. And that's a good thing for Texas. And I think that knowing how Casey Thompson prepares for games, knowing how, you know, I, I like that Xavier Worthy said that he's kind of OCD in his preparation. But no, like that, that matters. The details matter. And it would be very shocking to me at this point, Chip, to say that going into next week, going into the Texas Oklahoma game, that these issues will not be fixed by Casey Thompson, especially knowing, you know, this is Oklahoma and all of the history, as you mentioned, you know, his dad was a quarterback at Oklahoma. He's from Oklahoma. The fact that these type of things are on film for him to correct, I feel like will absolutely be correct. And there's corrected. And there's no reason why you wouldn't think that right now, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think you look at this and <laughs> Casey Thompson was 10 of 11 passing on third down coming into this game. So it's uncharacteristic of him mm -hmm. to go one of five passing on third down. Yeah. Texas was the least penalized team in the big 12 coming into this game got penalized nine times for 97 yards including five personal fouls they had five first quarter penalties including a false start on third and one from the tcu five and they had a great they had a cool play on the field they had roshan johnson ready to take the snap casey thompson out wide at receiver but after um, Jared Wiley was called for a false start. They moved back to third and six. They ran a different play. Uh, Christian Jones whiffed on his block and Casey Thompson got sacked for a 10 yard loss. And Cameron Dicker had to kick a 38 yard field goal, but it was uncharacteristic. Texas hasn't given up any big plays on special teams. They give up an 87 yard kick return on the opening kick. And, Tyler I mean, Owens, that was the worst missed tackle I think I've seen in my career. Like, I, I'm just putting that, I'm not trying to bash the kid, but my goodness, I saw that and I was like, is this real? Like, for real, right? Well, in I mean, he missed by like a two yards. He missed him by like two yards. It's like you were the first guy to him and you missed by two yards. Like, and I mean, he dove and it was like, what do you die? Did you see another person out there? Because it wasn't the ball handler like at all. Sorry, let you continue, but that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's true. They, um, uh, they missed Jade Baron out there, uh, cause he's really good at getting down the field, uh, on those, on those kickoffs, but they, you know, they haven't been giving up big plays on special teams and my man, Cameron Dicker, who I'm going to give a game ball to because he did hit four of four field goals. They needed every one of them. And he punted well today, two punts 
46 and a half yard average, including a 52 yarder that, that TCU muffed at their own nine and uh, DeMarvin Overshawn recovered and it led to a field goal for Texas. But Cameron Dicker, uh, you know, he, he's been doing really well on touchbacks. I think 21 of his 26 kickoffs going into the TCU game were touchbacks. And that opening kickoff went right to the goal line. His next four kickoffs were touchbacks and, and they were going through the end zone. So it just goes to show how important that is. And, and Dicker's usually really good about the touchbacks. So that was an uncharacteristic thing that led to a big play for TCU. So I guess what I'm saying is the, you know, the fans out there who are like, Oh my God, this we're, you know, that, that was an ugly game. Yeah. But it was uncharacteristic ugly and Texas still found a way to win on the road against a really inspired, tough TCU defense. And I'm going to give another game ball on a positive note to the Texas defense. It okay. So I'll just say they, they collected three turnovers because two of them were TCU just making the mistake, muffing the punt. And then they fumble a, a flip on a reverse. Um, and, and then Anthony cook absolutely forced a, a fumble on a strip sack, a beautiful blindside strip sack of, Max Duggan, Anthony Cook recovered the fumble, um, and that led to points as well for Texas. So the Texas defense, even though, and, and this is a big, yes, they gave up a hundred yards to Zach Evans, who had a big day was, who's an elite running back, but they did what they had to do in stopping Max Duggan. Duggan carried the ball, um, you know, double digit carries for two points. 16. 16 carries for 2.1 yards mm-hmm. per carry. That was huge because uh, you let Max Duggan get loose like he has the last two years against Texas. He had a 26-yard touchdown run last year against Texas. Right. You can't let Max Duggan beat you, and they didn't. They also didn't let Quentin Johnston beat him uh, or Tay Barber. So, yes, the Texas defense struggled mightily. They gave up a lot of yards, but they didn't give up big play touchdowns like they did last week. And Darian Dunn played really well uh, in place of the injured Josh Thompson. So, yeah, uh, and and, that, and that's big shoes to fill right now. I mean, Josh Thompson is one hundred percent the best corner on the team. Like, there's no doubt about it. I everyone likes. I like to always joke. You know, I'm probably you're probably the fan of the Deshaun James. You you drive the Deshaun Jameson fan train. I probably drive the Josh Thompson fan train. You know, but he's been the best corner on the team, in my opinion, Chip. And struggled. He struggled. Yeah, he has. And so wrong place. Yeah, the minute that I saw that job, or I heard and reported, and I know I got a little blasted for reporting it that Josh Thompson was out. That was that was good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Cause honestly, I was like, okay, first of all, let's be real. I reported it after Thursday, like practice when teams are finished with practice. I promise you that TCU was not going to change their game plan Thursday night when they don't have another full padded practice before an 11 a.m. kick on Saturday. So not trying to, you know, go down a different road, but still like that was a, that was another thing that Texas did overcome and that's a that's a good thing to know that Texas does have the the competent type of defenders like that. You know, everyone likes to point to yards when it comes to defenses. Knowing, you know, my I, I've said I can't tell how many times my uh, father in law, you know, being a defensive minded coach, coached in the state of Texas for almost thirty years before he retired. He'll always say, "I don't give a you know what about yards. I care about points." And Texas held TCU to less than 30 points. That's, you know, you'll take that any day in the big 12, in my opinion, especially against a Max Duggan who has torched Texas. I mean, it, it's kind of like Max Duggan has been the Taysom Hill of BYU when he's faced a Tex, Texas, in my opinion, like, you know, the, the uncharacteristic games where they rush for so many yards and just are the dagger. You didn't see that today in Texas um, game against TCU. So I think that's a win for Texas for sure. Yeah, I mean, you you come up with turnovers. Uh, they held TCU to field goals on a couple of drives that crossed Texas's twenty yard line. Good red zone defense, and 
And so as, as much as the defense struggled and gave up the 99 yard touchdown drive, there was some good in there and um, they almost had a fourth turnover, but Luke Brockermeyer and DeMarvin Overshawn both had their hands on the ball on a deflected pass uh, by Max Duggan in the second half and, and couldn't, you know, couldn't, neither one of them could uh, keep their hands on it. So they basically uh, knocked each other off the yeah, play. Off, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, off of the interception, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were some questionable calls, you know, late hits on Anthony cook and Tamarvian Overshawn that were questionable because I saw Oshan Mathis land on top of Casey Thompson after he was down and there was no flag. I don't like talking about the officiating, but that, that bad day at the office in terms of the, uh, the penalties, eh, a couple of those were, were questionable, but here's the bottom line game ball to, uh, the Texas defense for those, you know, forcing those turnovers game ball to Cameron Dicker four of four on field goals, excellent punting, even though he didn't get the touchback on the opening kickoff. Um, and Bijan Robinson, Casey Thompson stepping up when they needed it. And Jordan Whittington, Jordan Whittington, three catches. Um, and two of them, one was a 32 yard touchdown. The other, that 37 yarder you mentioned was like the first deep ball that Texas has hit this year. It was a 37 yard pass in the air. It was not a catch and run. Right. And Jordan Whittington went up, caught it. And finally they connected on a deep ball after, after missing out quite a few Taylor. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, Chip. And, you know, I mean, right now, Texas, just to finish off on talking about the defense, right now, Texas in the country out of, what, 130 FBS teams, Texas is 13th on in red zone defense. Texas is 13th in red zone defense. That's when it matters most. That's when, I mean, we talk about third downs being the money downs. If you're in the red zone or the red area, as Steve Sarkeesian likes to say, which I always kind of like, okay, can we not call it red zone? The red area sounds weird to me. But, you know, I mean, that's when you want your defense playing as sound as possible. And that's exactly what you're seeing from Texas right now. Um, talking about the officiate, officiating, I will, if you want to look at my Twitter feed, go ahead, because I absolutely annihilated Big 12 refs, because I absolutely am on the same boat with you, Chip. Like, I hate when I hear people be like, oh, well, this call costs us a game. And I, my thought's always like, maybe don't be in a game where the officiating can actually impact it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, don't, don't do stupid things or get that close in a game to where a call could change the outcome of the game. But this was one of the worst officiated games I think I've ever covered in um, the last 10 years. I mean, I, I literally – and it, it was both ways. It wasn't just, like, against Texas. TCU, I mean, the targeting ejection, like, I couldn't believe that that player got ejected for TCU. Um, I, I can, actually, I guess, because that rule, in my opinion, needs to be changed, and that's, you know, a topic for a different day. But there were calls bad both ways, and normally – what we've seen for Texas is if that is the situation, usually Texas loses games. And you saw Texas overcome so many different adversity striking type of moments in this game, including poor officiating on both sides. Again, again, I'm not saying that it was only going Texas way. TCU got some terrible calls against them too. Um, but the fact that they overcame this, is in my opinion, if you're a Texas fan, you'll take that every day of the week, especially going into an Oklahoma game um, where you're going to be hoping that everything clicks and all of these mistakes can be fixed, you know, in the next, what, seven days uh, before Texas know you face off. So I think that this was an ugly day at the office, but you have to walk away from, if you're a Texas, you have to walk away from it saying this was a positive day in the office too. Yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 you know, this is kind of the closing statement for me. This is the kind of game Texas has lost in recent years that ended up derailing their season. Um, just go back to last year, 10 point lead on Iowa State in the third quarter with a chance to go to the Big 12 title game, and Texas loses the game. Yeah, they home. led for 58 minutes and 30 seconds, I believe, yeah. in that game. Yeah. Um, go back to the TCU game in 2019 um, when they have a they have a 
touchdown lead in the third quarter and lose by 10. I mean, this is the kind of game that Texas has lost and, and, and it lost all credibility when they lost these games. Yes. Every team, every good team has a clunker usually except Alabama, uh, it seems, but this was a clunker. There's no question, but it came on the road at TCU coming off a loss, uh, whose coach we know turns this game into a holy war and, and loves the fact that he's, he was seven and two against Texas. Um, and so they absolutely ran into a laser focused, uh, you know, defensive football team in this game. And Bijan Robinson still ran 35 times for 216 yards by sidestepping one defender after another. This guy can make you miss in a phone booth. I covered Emmett Smith uh, in the Dallas Cowboys when I was working for the Dallas Morning News in the early 2000s. I covered the game where he became the NFL's all-time leading rusher. And I talked to two scouts today. There were 16 NFL scouts at the Texas TCU game today, by the way. And all of them were there to see Bijan Robinson against a Gary Patterson defense. And they all walked away going, oh boy, that guy is the real deal. And so this is the kind of game Texas has lost. And Taylor, this was such a big game. No one understands how big this game was to the psyche of these players. I, I'm going out on a limb and saying it. you're going to see it. I talked about how... Once you solidify the quarterback position, you should start to see week to week improvement. This was not week to week improvement, but they got away with it and they finished because they had a quarterback who stepped up, converted a couple third downs with his legs, threw a 32 yard touchdown pass in the fourth quarter. And they had a running back who was a monster and is truly special. He's the next. We've been saying that here on the flagship podcast. Um, he's the next in line with Earl and Ricky and Jamal Charles and Cedric Benson and, and Deontay Foreman. And today was a huge boost to the psyche of this program. I think you'll see it start to pay off uh, as we go forward. And so I totally agree. And I, I'll say this, Chip, I'm going to double down. B. John Robinson's the best quarter or the best running back in college football. And I have no problem saying that. I know that whoever, you know, listens to this as not a Texas fan may think that that is a biased take. It's not a biased take. He's the best running back in college football, if, he, if not one of the best players in college football right now. And we talked all summer about it didn't matter who the quarterback was as long as they had B. John Robinson healthy in a good running game. That's the best friend to a new first time starting quarterback. Bijan, I mean, Casey Thompson, I know he took his offensive lineman out to Vince Young Steakhouse last week. He needs to take Bijan Robinson probably out to Vince Young Steakhouse for the next five days straight because that is his best friend. It needs to be. And I I am I, I'm sold. There's no doubt in my mind that he is the best running back in college football. And Texas fans, just be ready, be happy that you have this for another year and a half because this is a special talent that we're covering right now. Yeah, and they overcame the injury to left guard Denzel Okafor, who left the game with a lower right leg injury. He got rolled up on in the first quarter. Uh, it caused a shuffle on the offensive line. Derek Kerstetter moved from right tackle to left guard, and then retro freshman Andre Carrick came in at right tackle. Um, Texas had to overcome that as well, and mm -hmm. just based on – how long Denzel Okafor was was down uh, that looked like a, a you know an injury that could linger, but yeah. we'll wait and see. But that was another thing that Texas had to overcome today. Uh, that Bijan Robinson um, and and this offense had to overcome, and and they were able to do it. So we'll be back on we'll be back on Monday. Yeah, to talk about the <laughs> Red River Shootout, baby. So get subscribed to Horns 24-7's YouTube channel so that Taylor and I can make fools of ourselves at the State Fair of Texas this week. And, and don't ever stop listening to the flagship podcast. Get over to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Keep our bosses happy. Um, and until next time, for Taylor Estes, I'm Chip Brown. Stay safe and keep the faith.